There's a popular saying that goes, life is short. And so everyone is busy enjoying life, or at least trying to, that we often forget to think about what happens when we die. In some parts of African culture, a lot of people shy away from talking about death. But just as we all must face life, we must also face death. So you have to wonder, what happens to us when we die? Interestingly, you can look at it from two perspectives. Many people wonder what happens naturally to the body when we die, while others are more interested in what happens after we die. According to a 2014 research study by Pew Research that asked people what happened after they die, the study found that 7 in 10 people, that is 72% of Americans, believe in heaven. Heaven is described as a place where people who have led good lives are eternally rewarded, whereas 58% of Americans also believe in hell. And hell is described as a place where people who have led bad lives and die without being sorry are eternally punished. A more recent Pew Research study showed that about 26% of Americans say they do not believe in heaven or hell, while 7% say they do believe in some kind of afterlife, and 17% say they do not believe in any afterlife at all. Well, whether or not people agree that there's heaven or hell, or some kind of afterlife, one thing is certain, death comes for everyone. But for today, let's begin our journey into the afterlife by discovering what happens to us physically when we die. Death happens when the body's vital functions cease entirely. This means that you are no longer breathing, your heart stops beating, and there is no more electrical activity going on in the brain. Physicians have said that the moment of death is not necessarily painful, although people with certain medical conditions may feel pain at the end of their lives. Most people think that the moment of death is the precise moment when our breathing and heartbeats stop. However, it has been discovered that death isn't as instantaneous as we thought. Interestingly, our brains can continue to work for about 10 minutes or so after apparent death. This means that our brains may in some way be aware of our death. But when we die, the doctors have to certify the absence of a pulse, breathing, muscle reflexes, and pupil contraction to bright light. When a person dies, just at the moment of death, all of the muscles in the body relax. The eyelids lose their tension, the pupils dilate, the jaw might fall open, and the body's joints and limbs are flexible. This state is called primary flaccidity. With all the muscles in the body relaxed, the skin will sag, which can cause prominent joints and bones in the body such as the hip to become pronounced. As the muscles relax, sphincters release and allow urine and feces to pass. This is where things get messy, and it could get worse. If the person had a lunch before they passed on, their lunch could spill out and the gas in their body may also leak out. The smell that would accompany this process isn't exactly going to be great. As the body gets rid of what is trapped inside, noises may come from the person's mouth as air escapes. Doctors, nurses, and people who work closely with dead bodies have often reported hearing sounds of moans and groans coming from dead bodies. The bodies may also twitch. Don't worry, it's not a zombie reawakening. These are just muscle contractions. Oddly, a person could also get an erection if they died lying on their stomach and the blood flowed there. Minutes after the heart stops beating, a process called pallor mortis happens. Pallor mortis causes the body to grow pale as the blood drains from the smaller veins in the skin. However, this process might be more visible in people with light skin. In this state, while the body grows pale, the body also begins to cool from its normal 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit temperature to the temperature of the air around it. This state is known as algor mortis, or the death chill. As the body begins to grow cold, and as the heart is no longer pumping blood, gravity steps in. It begins to pull the blood to the areas of the body that are closest to the ground. If the body is untouched for several hours, the parts of the body that are closest to the ground will develop a reddish-purple discoloration that looks like a bruise. You've probably seen this kind of discoloration in movies. This process is called liver mortis. By the third hour after a person is dead, some chemical changes will happen in the body cells, and this will cause the muscles to begin to stiffen. The first muscles to be affected will be the eyelids, the jaw, and the neck. This state is known as rigor mortis. The stiffness begins to spread to other parts of the body, into the face, the chest, abdomen, arms, and legs until it reaches the fingers and toes. By the 12th hour of death, the body becomes completely stiff. But physicians confirm that rigor mortis can happen differently in people due to their age, gender, physical condition, and other factors. 
After the body is completely stiff, the muscles begin to loosen due to the continued chemical changes within the cells and internal tissue decay. This process is known as secondary flaccidity. During this process, the skin begins to shrink and it may look like the hair and nails are growing, but that is not the case. What is happening is that the skin is receding and giving the impression of growth. Once the secondary flaccidity is complete, all the muscles in the body will relax again. The next stage after the body has gone through the process of relaxing, stiffening, and relaxing again is the putrefaction stage. This stage is when bacteria and microorganisms start to feast and decompose the body. Soon after, the body begins to produce a foul smell. Many people have described the smell as an intense combination of rotten eggs, feces, and a dirty toilet. And the smell is still so much worse. By the time the dead bodies are put in the ground, the bodies are already in the process of decomposition. But if the body is embalmed, it would slow down the decomposition process. When a body is buried, experts say it might take between 8 to 12 years before the body is reduced to nothing but a skeleton. And after about 50 years underground, the body will become part of the ground. On the other hand, if a body is left above ground and not buried, it becomes a liquefied mess in about a month, and it is feasted on by maggots, insects, animals, and plants. Although, the rate of decomposition also depends on all kinds of factors. When it comes to the afterlife part of what happens when we die, there are several reports of near-death experiences. Some felt nothing at all. Some people recounted that they had an experience of light and some interaction with another being or person, and some felt they could watch what was happening while they were dead. One person described his experience on Reddit, saying that it was a peaceful feeling more than anything. Another person described it as, I didn't see anything, just like sleeping with no dreams. While another said, I was standing in front of a giant wall of light. Many religions believe that the soul separates from the body in death, and some believe in reincarnation. There are several theories as to what happens when we die. But one thing is certain, our bodies are designed to shut down and die at some point. So it's just as good that we know what happens to them when we die. However, on the issue of the afterlife, I guess everyone would just have to wait and see for themselves. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.